Quantum mechanics was my favorite physics subject at both the undergraduate and the graduate student level in terms of the core physics classes that you have to take. Now, over the years, I have accumulated many different quantum mechanics textbooks. And by quantum mechanics, I mean non-relativistic quantum mechanics. We're not going to talk about quantum electrodynamics or quantum field theory, but I'm specifically talking about non-relativistic quantum mechanics, the stuff that you'd see at your upper division undergraduate courses in college or your first year graduate level courses in grad school. Now, I have a favorite quantum mechanics textbook, and it is with great pleasure that I will tell you about it today, but it is also with great sorrow because this book will be sadly leaving my collection after this video because I got the newest edition and I'm downsizing my library, so I'm going to give away the copy of my older copy of my favorite textbook to another person. So it is with great sadness that we do this video, but it'll be a farewell to a very loyal and trusty friend throughout the years. But before we tell you about it, let's tell you about all the other quantum mechanics textbooks that it beats. Now, of course, everything I say in this video is just my opinion. I am not the arbiter of everything that is good and not good, even though I should be, just kidding. If my favorite book is not your favorite book, then it's okay, even though you're Favorite book is probably not as good as my favorite book, just in my opinion. So anyways, before I show you what my favorite book is, let me show you what it's not. And honestly, this is just a way to show you what other quantum mechanics books are out there that may suit your interest. First up is Introduction to Quantum Mechanics by David J. Griffiths, third edition. My first quantum mechanics textbook at the undergraduate level was the second edition of this book, which I didn't really like, honestly. I was kind of shook that Griffiths made that book because I didn't think it was that informative, but this book I think is a much better version than the second edition, so use it at your own will. It has another author on here, Daryl F. Schroeder, which I think the two of them did a great job in refining this classic textbook. Next up, we have the, one of the quantum mechanics books I had at the graduate level, Lectures on Quantum Mechanics by Gordon Bain. Uh, this is an old book, it has like typewriter font. I don't know if you can like see that there, but it has like typewriter font. And I didn't like this book either. This book was very confusing. Didn't have any examples that I found useful, and the problems were freaking hard. So, not my cup of tea, but if you were like a masochist, please go right ahead and get the copy of this book. It's pretty rare these days, I think, so good luck with that. Next up, we have Quantum Mechanics, Non-Relativistic Theory by Landau and Lifshitz. This is the International Edition, but this is from the legendary Landau and Lifshitz course of theoretical physics. It was a 10-volume set, and Quantum Mechanics is volume, I think, three in this in this set of books and i have to tell you landau and lifshitz is legendary but what they're also legendary for are not explaining their steps because i specifically remember when i was a grad student in 2017 in the fall not the fall the summer of 2017 i was doing this summer research project i was solving the 1d schrodinger equation for this fairly complicated potential it actually has the answer in this book and i was following landau and lifshitz and they did the problem in like six lines, but it took me like 16 pages of work. So this book does have problems and solutions, but those solutions are gonna make you work because you're gonna be like, how did you go from step A to B in just one line when it took me so many pieces of paper? So that's that. Next up, we have Quantum Mechanics by Eugene Merzbacher. Um, to be honest, I don't know too much about this book. This was a book that was just up for grabs, a professor in our department was retiring in grad school and they were just like, I'm giving away all my books, take whatever you want. And this was one of them. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. It's a book that's actually even older than BAME, I believe. I believe this was used as a standard quantum mechanics textbook in 1962 or something. So it's a little bit old fashioned. And again, there's not too many examples in the book. I think it's using CGS units as well, which is a little bit confusing to people who grew up using SI units like myself. So anyways, an oldie, I'm not so sure of a goodie, but nevertheless, if you want historical quantum mechanics books, there you go. Next up, we have another classic, Principles of Quantum Mechanics, second edition by R. Shankar. This is a fan favorite from a lot of physics students, from what I've heard. I think it's pretty good. I have used it quite a bit. And I think it was better than BAME, which is what I used for grad school. So I, I used this primarily over BAME in grad school and the other book, which I'm about to show you. But after some more reflection, I do find that some of the examples in this book too are just not as detailed as I'd, I'd hope for them to be. 
some of the exercises are pretty confusing, but they do provide some answers in the back of the book, which is nice. For a long time, I would have put this close to the top of my list of like favorite quantum mechanics textbooks, but it has definitely been usurped by my personal favorite coming up soon. I know we're still just getting through all of the different other quantum mechanics books. Uh, next up, we have Modern Quantum Mechanics by Sakurai and Napolitano. This is the third edition. Sakurai's quantum mechanics textbook was again a standard of graduate level physics back in the day. Uh, the new edition actually features the work from the professor I did that summer undergraduate research project with that used the Landau Lifshitz derivation that took forever. So actually he's, he's quoted right here in terms of how this, um, this book has you know, revolutionized his understanding of quantum mechanics. And uh, I think he's also the most cited researcher at UC Irvine, which is pretty amazing. Um, just a little fun fact there. Next up, we have the Theoretical Minimum Quantum Mechanics by Leonard Susskind, and then Quanta and Fields by Sean Carroll. These two aren't really standard textbooks. They're kind of supplementary books that are meant to introduce the subject to sort of a first time student of the subject. So they're not formal textbooks per se, but I do think they're actually really good to get if you are interested in quantum mechanics, but you're not a physics student by training, I think this gives you a lot of the conceptual ideas down very well. And so uh, again, wouldn't use it as a textbook, but great first book to help you ground yourself in the main ideas. And looking in front of me, I realized I forgot one more before I get to my favorite one. So be right back. The final book that I'm gonna show you before I get to my actual favorite quantum mechanics textbook is the Feynman Lectures on Physics. Volume three, Quantum Mechanics. Now, this book is part of the famous Feynman Lectures on Physics. I think they're great for conceptual understanding. Feynman's explanations are first class all the way. When I read this book every now and then, I just think, wow, why didn't I learn quantum mechanics like that? I mean, some of these explanations just make you go, oh, that's what that means, or that's how I should think about it. And, and thoughts of that nature. So really good, not a whole lot of examples and problems per se, so I couldn't recommend it as a primary textbook because you can't get a lot of practice, but again, really good for conceptual grounding and a great book to revisit once you've actually reached a pretty advanced level in quantum mechanics. It gives you a real expert's insight onto the subject and how he thought about the subject. So. With that, those are all my other quantum mechanics books that is not my favorite quantum mechanics book. I know we've taken a long time to get here, but I'm drawing out this farewell because I am a little bit sad to let this book go, but you know, when one door closes, another door opens, and so it's time to say goodbye to a dear friend. Well, here she is, Quantum Mechanics, Concepts and Applications by Nurdin Zatilli, second edition for a long time I always pushed as the definitive quantum mechanics textbook that any student of physics should get. And I'm gonna go into this book and show you exactly why I think it is superior to all of the other books that I showed you for the past several minutes. And I'm gonna show you also the third edition and just the contents of the third edition to show you what has changed between these two uh, editions. And uh, we'll just talk about why I think it's really great. So I'm going to give you an overhead view, so let's go to the overhead camera. Okay, so here it is, my favorite quantum mechanics textbook. This is one of my longest serving books that I've referred to on the subject for many years. And it is sad for me to think this might be the last time I peruse it, but thank you, old friend. We're going to go down one last flip through together. So, so here are the contents of the second edition here. You start with the origins of quantum physics. I really like this chapter because it really lays the groundwork for why quantum mechanics was really needed at the start of the 20th century and all the different classical paradoxes that were arising because they didn't fully understand what was happening at the atomic level. The second chapter of the book is on mathematical tools of quantum mechanics. It goes through all of the mathematical tools you need to successfully study quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics re really requires a good understanding of calculus, linear algebra, differential equations, and even a bit more than that. So I think this is also great that it gives you 
sort of the motivation in the first chapter and then gives you a really great breakdown of all the mathematical nuances you need to actually start solving problems. The third, fourth, and fifth chapter are all kind of standard quantum mechanics stuff you learn in that order. So postulates of the subject, 1D problems, so you're going through stuff like the uh, infinite potential square well and the finite potential square well, as well as the harmonic oscillator. And all the subjects you see here in the book are all standard things you would see in a quantum mechanics textbook. But the thing that I think really separates this book from all the others is its use of problems and examples because it comes with fully worked out problems in this book. So you can see here, I'm on chapter one, you can see that this, this problem 14 has a solution here. It has, I think there's like 16 or so problem 17. But the point being has 18, it has 18 fully solved problems in this chapter. And then it goes through the uh, unsolved exercises. But I think this is the beauty of this book. This book gives you real tangible solutions to these problems to work on. Because I think in a lot of the other textbooks I mentioned, they really don't have something like this where they go through this many problems on a given subject. Sometimes you just see one or two examples in the chapter before you're just hit with like 35 different exercises that were not really covered at all in the chapter section before the problems. And this book, just for every chapter, has a really nice set of problems and solutions that is just vital, I think, to really understand quantum mechanics because quantum mechanics is just extremely non-intuitive. Our brains are mostly wired to think classically. We're used to macroscopic objects, not microscopic objects. And so it's so hard to really truly grasp quantum mechanics without doing a lot of problems and just working through some of the non-intuitive nature on your own. And so I think because of this aspect of this book, because it contains so many detailed worked out uh, problems and also gives you non-solved exercises as well. So you can, you know, do more problems um, in addition. I think that just puts it over the top in terms of why I think it's the best quantum mechanics textbook you can possibly get. So now we're going to talk about the third edition really briefly and just show the preface section showing what has changed between these two books. So I'm gonna put them side by side here. The third edition thankfully has all the different changes to the book in this preface here. So the additional topics in the third edition include two full new chapters on relativistic quantum mechanics and beyond relativistic quantum mechanics, which like I said, is beyond the non-relativistic quantum mechanics that you normally would learn in a book like this. So I think it's great. It gives you sort of a sneak peek into what you can advance into past this subject. It includes uh, some new appendices here, as well as an overhaul of several different sections in the book. And so it does seem to me that this is a substantial new book in its own right that has new things to learn. And I'm very excited to delve back into it. And who knows, maybe I'll make some videos on quantum mechanics myself because it is my favorite subject. And even though I don't normally use it on my day-to-day -day basis, I do think about it a lot and its implications for our reality of the world and the universe at large. And so I, I might want to, at some point, make videos about the subject. And you best bet I'll be using this book to help me make that video series. Okay, so that is it. Those are all the quantum mechanics books that I own, all the non-relativistic quantum mechanics books that I own and I hopefully conveyed to you why I think these two, or specifically, I guess it was this one for a long time, but now it will be this one, is my favorite quantum mechanics textbook. Um, the problems that they provide and the practice that you get from doing them, I think is just invaluable to any aspiring physicist. So if I had to recommend any quantum mechanics book to a newcomer, it is definitely this one or these two. I guess specifically it would be this one nowadays, but I'm giving away this one. So anyways, I hope everyone will say goodbye to second edition of Zatilli. It was a good run we had, old friend, but uh, you are going to go into better hands now. So anyways, thanks for watching everybody. If you want me to make more videos with the overhead camera and talk about my books, please leave a comment below. I really do like talking about books, but I'm always kind of unsure if that's the kind of direction I want the channel to go in. But if people really want to see my books and I love talking about them. If you can't tell, then just leave a comment below and I will consider making more videos like this. So with that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.